Good morning. Aaron, please remind me again. Whose idea was it that I have to wake up at like five o'clock? It's 5.30 right now and I have to go into green aqua. This video is about the silent heroes of Green Aqua. Those maintenance team members who wake up early in the morning for going in and follow the life of the maintenance experts of Green Aqua, who with their work will provide the spotless quality of the Green Aqua tanks. Welcome to the beautiful world of aquascaping. The sun has come up and it's pretty cold. Good thing that I have my tea. So let us go in and see what the guys are up to because they've been working for um, 20 minutes now. It's 6.20. Sesame open. Listens to me. And what you see is that actually they are already working on the two cube aquariums. The maintenance of these uh, glass in and outflows is pretty easy. We just have to remove them. We're gonna soak them in the green aqua clean it solution for a couple of minutes, rinse them, and then they're gonna be crystal clean. Before we did that though, we had to stop the filters, obviously. Tony is with us for more than a year now and he never knew anything about aquascaping before he came to green aqua. The other maintenance expert, Leonard, he had aquariums before, right? Right. We do need to work before hours and after hours because we don't want the hoses and the maintenance to distract the client experience. So two guys, full time, 40 hours per week or 36 hours per week are working on maintaining all the gallery tanks plus the fish tanks in the back. Lenny is trimming the Hemianthus cuba here. Tommy has asked him to uh, have a one centimeter thick layer in the foreground. The catch with this plant is that if you trim it too much, then the uh, yellow spots, the bottom of the plant will be exposed. We have weekly water changes on all tanks, except the new tanks, obviously, which uh, need regular water changes. We do daily water changes for the first week for the new tanks. What Tony is doing now, he studied the water change using the force of gravity. He's just moving his fingers around the plants to, you know, stir up all the debris. The more organics you remove, the less ammonia the filter will have to nitrify. We've got two taps on this hose. One tap is open on the other end of the hose, and that is in the drainage. And then when you open this tap, this hose is stored full with water. And when you open the tap, the gravity will suck out all the, uh, all the debris and all the water from the tank. The, the point is to keep the other end of the hose under the water. So what you see Tony now doing is that uh, he's cleaning the glass from inside. It's very dangerous to use the sponge like this because you can, you know, take out debris from the sand and some sand particles and you can scratch the glass with it. So you need a lot of experience to do this kind of cleaning. He's paying a lot of attention to release the uh, mat as soon as it gets to the level of the sand so that it doesn't catch any sand particles. In addition to the pad, we usually use the uh, ADA algae scrapers. You can see that we're paying special attention to the top of the aquarium. We want that to be very clean, especially at the water level. This is a very good method to store them. 
as the last step of the water change. We need this big hose because we need to reach into the center of this structure. Because if you would release the water onto the sand, it would spread it everywhere. We have the uh, ADA solar RGB lights and Chihiro's lights mostly. Now see, this, this is a problem because it's like 7.09, so a little bit after 7 and there's one spot in the shades on the window. You would not believe how well the morning sun can, you know, shine onto the tanks, maybe just for 10 minutes. Huge problem. We never realized why do we have algae on a certain tank and we didn't realize because we never watched it at 7 and we didn't connect the dots. So you don't want any direct sunlight to hit your tank. As you can see, Tony had already stopped taking some water out of the tank. So we reached the 50% water change limit and we started filling up the tank. We just wait until uh, we fill up the tank to the proper level. It's about uh, one and a half centimeters below the rim of the tank. Lenny had uh, reached to the point where he moves towards the back of the tank, so he's working on the mid-ground and the middle of the tank, trimming the articularis. A nice graduation is made. Oh, look at that! Once the aquarium is filled up, Tony will restart the filter. Because the hoses were filled with water, the filter will not need any priming, so it will start by itself. This uh, inlet has a skimmer on top, and you can hear the skimmer already working, but you need to prime that as well. Okay, it's set. Success. All that remains to be done is to remineralize the reverse osmosis water and the TDS level is uh, 63, 64 and that needs to be increased to 120. All right, so it's 7.30 now. I know we, the video team, have obstructed Tony a little bit. So usually in an hour he should be done with this. So it's a good time to have some coffee with the other team members. I think I'm going to just go and join them. I drank my tea, but it's always good to have great company, huh? Great. After a short and very, very inspiring break, we found that the uh, TDS is a bit higher than 20. It's 128, 29 now, which is quite perfect. Some people have asked me, what do you do about uh, hard water? Can you add something to the water so that the hardness goes down? No, you cannot. The only way to do that is dilution. So you need to add more reverse osmosis water. And when we're ready, all that needs to be done is to switch the lights off and then move on to another task. Okay, so Lenny is right now trimming the rocks. No. <laughs> he's actually just trimming the top. He's almost done. It's quite uniform. It's quite tidy as it is, right? I love it. It looks great. So now Tony has moved to the second tank. This one is a 60p tank with an ADA Superjet filter that needs some hose cleaning. There's not much to be done in this tank but the regular water change. As you can see he's just pushing the plants a little bit downwards to release any organic material that has been trapped. He needs to clean the rocks with the electric toothbrush. Some people just love to leave the algae on the rocks. They would think that it's more natural. If there's a big cloud forming after this electric toothbrush method, you can just use the suction side hose to suck out all the, uh, all the debris, all the, all the dust. 
As you can see, some sun actually appeared on this uh, tank, but it's not a big problem because uh, it's coming through the shades, so it's not coming in full force. We should have seen edgy until now if this was a problem. Tony had moved on to the Monte Carlo and he's cleaning the Monte Carlo with the electric toothbrush. I've never seen this technology before, but he swears that uh, it really helps against the edgy. Why you see Lenny cleaning the glass, so he finished trimming. What you see here is that Lenny is cleaning the glue. If you would use like an algae scraper, that would, you know, actually scratch the glue. And in the meantime, the guys are fighting for the water change hose. <laughs> They're asking each other whether they can take the water change hose or not. So Lenny is doing the same thing, right? He's cleaning the uh, carpet by just pushing it and that will release a lot of organics. And what Tony is doing is that he's removing the residues from the glass with a paper towel. He told me that he learned this from an, an old man at Green Aqua and I said, who? You? I mean, me? That is very satisfying. Check this out. Each day has its own schedule. So today the guys are doing these uh, two aquariums plus the 60 aquarium. But then there are days when we clean the plant holding tanks. They're always consulting with each other and with other team members at Green Aqua. Look at that, the mono shrimp. They're always like getting out. They are not afraid of heights. <laughs> They're not afraid of going from one pond to another in nature when one pond dries out. The day starts to work and then at the end we're going to have a huge crowd of aquascapers running around and talking about tanks. How cool is that? And then the customers and friends from all over the world. I love this. Now he needs the other hose and then it's taken by Tony. See, there's a fight for the hoses. I think we should really need two hoses somehow. But you only have to wait like two, three minutes so it's not a problem really. A regular water change with uh, some toothbrush action 30 minutes, easy, not a problem. So this is how to prime an ADA filter. You let it run until there's no more air bubbles in the hose. Now the time of the quick interviews. Oh, so Tommy, how does it feel to be uh, late? Late, not late, half an hour early. Good morning, everyone. <laughs> so Tommy has arrived. You've done this? No, I haven't done anything. I've been commenting whatever happens here. How fun that is for the maintenance guys. How fun it was waking up early. I woke up at 5 and I went to bed at 4. Oh, and Gary is here. Good morning, Gary. Good morning, everybody. What do you have for, for food? Uh, how should I say? Rokot krumpli? Rokot krumpli. Good Hungarian food. <laughs> I don't know the name in English. So the moment he arrives, he's already helping. How cool is that? So now I learned something. If you add air bubbles to the crown of the skimmer, then you can, you know, increase the height of it. And he happens to have a syringe in his pocket. <laughs> And then, ladies and gentlemen, the lights are switching on at 9 and they're switching off at 5 o'clock. Let's look around, let's see what's happening in the gallery. Lori, our fish expert, is also has arrived and uh, she's coming here at 9 o'clock to help the guys out with uh, looking at all the tanks. And if he sees any problems, he's going to tell the guys to help 
there's some algae visible. Yeah, because it's uh, quite a new tank. We use uh, an internal filter. Sure, that's not very efficient, yeah. yeah. The plant holding tanks also need some attention. You need to clean the uh, skimmers from the leaves. This is the moment when uh, Lori is going to go around all the tanks and checking all the tanks for any problems. Because of the new water, which is saturated in oxygen, there's a lot of small oxygen bubbles on the glass. So that needs to be removed because it's not beautiful. And then he's adding some ADA clear water. It will make the water cloudy a bit for the first couple of minutes, but then it's gonna be crystal clear. Lenny is cleaning the Aquasoil Amazonia particles with some magnet attached to a sand flatterner. Now let me see if I look on this tank, what do I see? I really see no, no problems at all. This is Tommy's uh, IAPRC tank. No photo. So let's move on to the other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> we discovered that there's some algae still visible if you're just looking at this from the side like this, you can see some spots of algae. I, I can see some here. So it's not true that we don't have algae at Green Aqua. We do have algae, which is not visible. And if you have all the conditions right, if you do the water changes, and if you do some algae scraping, ideally on a daily basis, you will be fine. We're also checking the automatic plant fertilizing dosages because those tanks that are not fertilized will be done by one of the sales members and it's going to be done a little bit later after 10 o'clock. You can do it anytime during the day. And we have different fertilizer regime for the different tanks. Mostly we have ADA ferts and then we have green aqua ferts as well. It's wise to remember when you build a tank and you don't want daily maintenance on it, don't use sand. Because if you do, then you will need daily maintenance, at least removing the soy particles. This is my mistake, because I put some glue. We need to check the CO2 canisters as well. There's the bottle in the back. It's almost in the red, which means that we need to pay special attention to it. As you see now is the last step in the morning is feeding the fish. He has two types of fish food, the nano fish food and the normal. And this is the pace that he's working at. But he's like moving around many times. He likes to feed the fish in multiple rounds. He's like at the fourth aquarium right now at a very fast pace. He's going fast. He's the second lap. He's leading the second lap. <laughs> How can he do this? The finish line is close. And the winner will be... Lori, yeah! <laughs> They're going to come back at five o'clock and continue today's work in the afternoon with new tanks. It is exactly 10 o'clock. How cool is this? Exactly 10 and I'm alone in the gallery because these great team members had just finished for the, for the morning, they're gonna come back at five o'clock and uh, they're gonna continue with these 60 tanks in the background and they're gonna do more maintenance, more cleaning, more hose cleaning, more filter cleaning. Those are the occasional jobs that they have to do. So you guys got a sneak peek into how green aqua looks and what is the, uh, the regular morning maintenance routine of the green aqua tanks. So I hope that you liked it. If you did, please let us know what you think about it. And now you know how to create a spotless, nice tank at home. If you need low maintenance, don't use sand. But other than that, slow growing plants, regular water changes weekly, in half an hour you'll be done. In one, maybe one and a half hours for a big trimming like, like we did uh, with this cube tank. Okay, we'll see you next Thursday. Bye. Yeah.